The last part of the clamp contract is to implement fees. So in this video, we'll complete the library tick. We'll start off by completing the function that will calculate the fee growth inside. The function get fee growth inside will take in these parameters. It's going to take in a state variable, a mapping from int24 to info struct. It's going to take tick lower, tick upper, the current tick, and the state variables for fee growth global 0x128 and 1x128. And inside here, we'll implement the code that will calculate the fee growth inside 0x128 and fee growth inside 1x128. The first thing that we'll do is get the info for the lower tick and the upper tick. So say info storage lower is equal to self. This self is coming from the input, which will be a mapping from the tick to the info struct. Say self tick lower. Okay, and we'll do something similar for the upper tick. Info storage upper is equal to tick upper. Okay, the next thing that we'll do is calculate the fee growth inside 0x128 and fee growth inside 1x128. Now, inside here, we're going to wrap our code inside uncheck. Now, this is because if you look inside the Uniswap b3 contract, so pay in Uniswap b3 core, contracts, libraries, tick.sol, you can see that the solidity version is specified as less than 0 0.8. So this means that inside the Uniswap b3 tick library, it allows overflow and underflows. And you can see here, we have a function called get fee growth inside. And this is the code that calculates fee growth inside. You call from the videos about the equations that the fee growth inside can be both positive and negative. Since here we're dealing with UN256, this means that this these numbers can overflow or underflow. However, here inside our code, we're working with Solidity 0.8. So that is why we need to specify that the numbers inside here, the fee growth inside that we'll calculate, can overflow and underflow. We'll start off by calculating fee growth below. So say UN256 fee growth below 0x128. And we also initialize for fee growth below 1x128. Next, we'll calculate them. Now, recall from the video about the equations that fee growth below is different, and it depends whether the current tick is above tick lower or whether it is below tick lower. Say if tick lower is greater than or equal to tick current, then we set this fee growth below 0x128, fee growth below 0x128 to be the lower dot fee growth outside 0x128, and we'll do the same for fee growth below 1x, 1x128. Else, we'll set fee growth below 0x128 to be equal to fee growth global 0x128 minus lower dot fee growth outside 0x128. And we'll do something similar for fee growth below 1x128. Okay, next we'll do something similar for fee growth above 1x128. So I'll change these to fee growth above 0x128 and 1x128. The condition here will be if tick current is less than tick upper, then we set fee growth above to the upper info, upper, fee growth outside 0x128, and fee growth outside 1x128. Otherwise, fee growth above 0x128 and 1x128 will be fee growth global 0x128 minus upper info. This should be outside. Okay, once we calculated fee growth below and fee growth above, we're now ready to calculate fee growth inside. So, fee growth inside 0x128 is equal to fee growth global 0x128 minus fee growth below 0x128 minus fee growth above 0x128. And likewise, we'll do something similar for fee growth inside 1x128. Change all the zeros to a 1. 
Okay, and that completes the function for get figo inside. Okay, so let's move on. What is the next thing that we need to do? The next thing that we need to do is inside the function update, we'll need to initialize tick below if the tick to initialize is less than or equal to the current tick. So here, say if tick to initialize is less than or equal to the current tick, tick current, then we'll need to set info.fgrowth outside 0x128 to be the current fee growth global 0x128. Fee growth global 0x128. And likewise for fee growth outside 1x128. Okay, and that completes the function for update. Okay, let's move on. So the last thing that we'll need to do inside this file is to wrap unchecked inside the function cross. Say unchecked. And why are we doing this? Well, again, going back to the Uniswap B3 tick contract, if you scroll all the way down, you can see here that it calculates fee growth outside 0x128. And we call that fee growth global minus info dot fee growth outside can overflow or underflow. And again, inside Uniswap B3, the Solidity version for this contract is less than 0 0.8. So by default, these math operations can underflow and overflow. However, here we're using Solidity 0 0.8. So we need to explicitly tell that inside here, we allow underflow and overflow. Okay, so that completes the contract for take. Let's try compiling the contract. Inside my terminal, I'll type forge build. And our contract compiles. So we completed the contract for tick. In the next video, we'll do the same for the library position. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.